keep up to date with our latest videos, please hit the subscribe button below. Hi there, Chris here from racingbetdata.com. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is compile a list of popular Excel commands and formulas um, using data from our data dashboard, uh, from our pre-race download file and our results and odds download file. So I'm going to navigate to the data dashboard and export yesterday's results from the download file. So I'm going to leave everything as default and select uh, yesterday's. Send that to Excel. And I'm also going to select the pre-race download file from yesterday and also the results and odds download file from yesterday. Now, what that will look like is something like this. So we have the results um, file, we have the daily file from yesterday, and we have yesterday's results file. Okay, so we're going to use the dashboard export as the main uh, control file here. So this is one we've just exported yesterday's results from the data dashboard. And we're going to use some common Excel formulas in these spare columns to the right hand side. Uh, and sometimes linking in with the pre-race download file from yesterday and the results and odds file from yesterday um, and showing you how to use some of these formulas um, to, to knit parts of data and pieces of data from various sources together. OK. So the first formula we're going to use is sum if. And in fact, we're going to go plural and sum ifs. OK, so I'm just put that in the header there. Now, what we're going to say is if we want to return the um, RBD rating from yesterday's pre-race download file into the results from yesterday's output from the data dashboard. OK, so we go into the formula bar and type some ifs. And click on this function button here, and this brings up a table. Now, with most Excel formulas um, and pop ups, they give you a detailed enough explanation here in the box to show you what it's doing hopefully uh, giving you a visual explanation will, will make this even clearer so some ifs so we're gonna what's the difference between some if and some ifs first of all some ifs allow more than one criteria to be added whereas a some if is just one set of criteria so for, say for instance you wanted to get the rbd um, rating and you just wanted to reference the horse name as with the one criteria that would bring that back um, if, for instance, you wanted to add more criteria, so you want to look at the track and the date, perhaps you had a larger range of data, so you wanted to specifically look for that, that race, um, that's where you'd use a sum ifs. Um, and that's what I'm going to use here as well. So if I just open up the uh, daily file, so the sum range is, and it could be any of these, I'm just using the RBD rating for the example. Uh, so criteria range one. So the first range we want to look at is the date and we want it to equal the date in this row which is in column a so you can see it's already returned a value so it's summed basically there's no specific about this horse yet we've just looked at the the sum of all the rbd ratings for yesterday now what we want to do is specify the uh, track as well so we go back to here, we look at column C, and then we look at track. So you can see that that uh, quantity is now dropped down because we've narrowed it down by track. And then the third criteria we want to look at. So usually three pieces of information are enough to give you a unique hook. And we want to look at the horse. here because our outputs from the dashboard are tabulized it's referencing the the header column automatically by itself now you could type that in there and you could put j2 and it would do the same thing um, but because it's a table it's uh, it's automatically picking that up which makes uh, populating larger sets of data easier you don't have to copy and repaste re repaste that all over and drag and drop so let's click ok and you can see it's populated that all the way down like i said it's tabulated so it's picked up the horses rbd rating for each one of those horses that ran yesterday okay so really useful let's have a look at uh, rank as another uh, formula so if we put in rank here uh, 
Uh, so it's asking for the number, okay? Now, this is the, the reference, uh, the number that you want to reference. Now, this isn't going to actually work in um, a tabulated format, and I'll show you why. But um, I'm going to go through and show you what rank does anyway. There's a better way to rank, and I'll show you this one after. So we're looking for, let's say we're using the bet for SP and we want to rank the horse. So bet for SP. Now reference needs to be specific to that race. You can see this one. There's actually only two horses in that race. So the range here is, is just that. And then the order, you can, uh, as it, again, it shows you down here, descending or ascending. So if we want to show it in ascending order, we put a one. And that shows you this horse was ranked one uh, for that race. Now, because we've specified the range here for this, this horse, this is going to push that same range all the way down, and it's not going to make sense. So if we change this one to T2 to T3, that will return a 2. So it's showing that the first horse, uh, Floating Rock, was ranked 1 with the SP of 1.61, and Nero Rock was ranked 2 with a higher SP of 2.68. But it's not going to work in this form because... The, the formula is going to be dynamic. The, the range of the race is going to be dynamic. So <clears throat> rank isn't really a formula that you'd use unless you've got a standardized uh, range. One other way we can do it, or the, an, another way to do it, is using countifs. So we've already used some but let's use countifs. And what we can do here is say we're looking at the range, which is... Uh, the tr the so we can put in the date although all the dates are going to be the same so the date meets that date and we're going to look at the track track and then we're going to look at the time so that gives us the three unique hooks okay uh, and then what we want to say is we need to look at the um, betfair sp column so that's this one here and we're going to say where the range was less than that. And then we're going to put a plus at the end. Okay. I've done that in the wrong place. Let me uh, silly me. Count ifs, even when we make mistakes. So let me do it again. Twice. Count ifs. So we're looking at. Wondering why it wasn't pulling this through. I was trying to do it in the header. Uh, time and then the bet for SP column. Okay, so we're looking at bet for SP where range is. We need to get the brackets in the right place. Greater than, sorry, less than. This one because it would give the uh, the wrong order plus one <clears throat> like that. Now you can see that it's given us the ranking, regardless of the amount of horses running in the race. You can see here that they're listing uh, correctly. an eight runner race and it's ranked them in order um let's pick a one further down let's go for worcester and let's isolate a race this is 405 you can see here that it's ranked them in order using count ifs based on the betfair sp small to large so that's count ifs that's uh that's how you can use that to generate yourself a, a ranking order. Um, very useful if you've got a larger set of data. Okay, let's use concatenate next. Concatenate, and concatenate is basically to join. So if you wanted to create, so I'm talking about unique hooks, but if you want to create a unique reference, uh, you can do so using concatenate. So we type in concatenate. And there's a quick way of using it. You can just use the and sign. But let's use, so it's asking us to populate the first bit of text. So if we say the first bit of text is the date, 
second bit of text is the time and the third bit of text is the horse now you can see here it gives uh, the date and the time as values and then the horse's name at the end and that gives you a unique lookup uh, so it's date time horse name you can use uh, any different chosen uh, set of criteria you want um, but that's how you can use concatenate to create yourself a uh, unique hook let's use the lookup quite a popular one so v lookup's good but it has its limitations so we've used some if to return uh, the uh, the rbd rating now you could use v lookup but i'll show you where it has its flaws so let's do v lookup it will look up the first instance that it comes across so look up value let's we're going to we're going to simulate getting the um the rbd rating but it's not actually going to return the value and i'll show you why so we're looking up for floating rock uh, in the table of uh, okay. so the table array we need to start so it's always going to look at the, the leftmost column needs to be the one that matches your lookup value okay so when you look at your table array we need to select from j and we're going to look across to the rbd rating <clears throat> which is there now see this little white pop-up box which is changing as i drag that's the 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 r six, uh, signifies how many rows the c signifies how many columns and it's quite well you don't have to select it here but it's quite saves you a bit of time if you notice this column as you're dragging it along to see which one you want to reference and return so rb rating is 34 so we set the range and then we put in 34 as the column index now range lookup we put in false if we left that black blank or put in true uh, it would return a um a closest match whereas false means an exact match so you can see it's not found anything for that horse it's come returned a blank uh, and indeed it probably has for all of these unless the only ones that it won't are these ones here where these are horses running their first it's their debut uh, <coughs> debut outing now let's have a look at why it's done that so the name of this first horse was Floating Rock. And I'm going to quickly go back to the daily file and look for Floating Rock. <clears throat> Let's put some filters on here. And type in Floating Rock. And what it's done, it's found this first in, uh, instance, which was a race from the 22nd of February 2019. Uh, and it's returned a blank. We only have the RBD rating for the day that the horse is running. We are looking at doing a, a, a way of backfilling this and getting this information into the database, but it's quite a lengthy process. Um, so bear with us on that. But that's why a VLOOKUP will not work in that instance. So if I return to the uh, dashboard output, okay, let's delete this out actually, and let's use a will return what we want <clears throat> so we're basically looking for a match where there's only one line so that's where we can use the results and odds file that we've downloaded so we're going to do a vlookup on the horse name now let's open up the uh, results file and if we wanted to return any of these values to the race name that's not in there winning time silk number let's do the silk number we could do post time odds 10 minutes before odds let's go for silk number uh, so again clocking that column at the top there see the white box so it's column 12 and false that will then populate the silk number now you can see straight away there eagle eye can munch you that there's a uh, an error that's a, appeared against melburnian now the reason that melburnian's thrown an error is that this is what we call a dual active horse okay that means that there are two or more horses running uh, at the same time or still active that have the same name so what we do is differentiate one of these with the suffix of its country of origin um, now the reason it's throwing an error is that the results and odds file uh, is a direct betfair feed now the betfair uh, naming convention is the same as rbd apart from where you have a dual active horse um where betfair do not 
distinguish it with its suffix unless the horses are running in the same race. We had this example um, a couple of days ago where Sierra Nevada, there were two horses called Sierra Nevada at the same race uh, in the 450 at Gowan Park, um, 12th of June. Very uncommon and unlikely. One of them actually went on to win. Um, but in those instances, Betfair do distinguish the horses. They have to, but in, in some way, with a suffix of the country of origin. But otherwise, they do not. So that's why the um, results and odds file has a slightly different naming convention where there's a dual active horse. So you can see Melbourne in here. Now, that is a, an actually a great example because this will show you a good way to um, use another function in Excel. Uh, and what we're going to use here is the left function. So let's take the left up here. And what we're going to do is put in here equals left. And we're going to reference the horse name. And then we're going to combine it with find. And we're going to look for, so we need to put it in quotation marks. We're going to, so that all the suffixes would be um, surrounded by um, an open and close bracket. Find this. And then horse. And then one character. And then look for everything before that. Now that should work. Uh, so there you go. You can say Melbourneian has now been stripped of its suffix. But what it's done is cause an error on every other row. Uh, because there is no instance of the open bracket. So this leads to another formula we can use and you can combine this I'm going to show you it separately if error which is a useful one if error, uh, and I'm just going to open the function box so the value we're saying if this value is an error then do what so the value if it is an error let's return the horse name okay. now what you can see here is that we have the full list of horses names uh, <clears throat> even Melbourneian included with no suffix. So to combine the two, we strip all this out and put uh, equals if error. We paste that formula in. So instead of referencing it like we did here, we're referencing AQ, we can just put the formula straight in and say if it is an error, then reference. There you have. A full list of horses all cleansed. Now, now I'm going to show you uh, where we've got a slight issue here with Melbourneian. Now, if I get copy the horse name and I'm going to paste it as a value over here, just separately. For all intents and purposes, that looks fine. Looks like Melbourneian. And if we were to do a lookup on that now, uh, it would throw an error. You can see here if I change the reference. From the horse column to the left column, I'm still getting an error here. So this is now referenced in the left column, but it's still giving an error. But we're looking at it and it shows Melbourne and it's taken out the suffix. So what could be the issue? Now this is a common problem that trips up many people using data within Excel, within their working lives, personal lives, wherever. Uh, you can't see it. So if we click on the horse, so that we've pasted the value in and then click on it, you can see there's actually a space at the end there. So this is where we can use another piece of formula called trim, which will actually remove any invisible to the naked eye, if you like or gaps so let's say we're going to trim this column all you need to do is put trim and then the value or the reference in there and that will then trim the the name removing any blanks from the end you can see here across the channel there's blanks or spaces in between but it takes any unwanted spaces off the end now if i change the look up here 
to from the left to the trim that is populated for Melburnian. So that's how you can use the left, the if error, and trim combined. So we can even put it in here and do trim. That I can paste it in. Trim. Take for all of these. Now, if I do a copy of Melburn, um, what am I doing? If I do a copy of Melburnian, paste it in here as value, and look up here. There's no uh, spurious spaces or blanks at the end of his name. Now, there are other basic formula you can use some um, average uh, if, um, but I'm assuming that those basic ones are covered. I'm just going to look at one more, which is average ifs. Uh, and it's here average ifs. I've lost it. So we're going to look at the average range uh, for the results yesterday. So we're going to look at the results file. And what we want to do, look at the average um, odds 10 minutes before the off. So the average range is this one. The criteria range are unique hooks. So we're going to say the track name has to meet the criteria of this. Use hexam. Oh, I'm alerted to the fact. So I've seen here already that it's not picked up. Um, I'm trying to copy, I'm trying to type into the formula bar again. I'm doing this on very little sleep, guys, so apologies. Average ifs, right, let's start again. This should be clearer. Average ifs. So we're looking at the average range from the results file for yesterday. And we're going to look at the 10 minutes. criteria range. In the same file, the results file is the track name, and then we're going to reference the track here. And we're going to look at the date. We don't need it. We could just do an average if. And let's have a look at the results. So we're going to put in the date again. So if you had a larger section of data, it'll ensure you're looking at the right days race in column. Click OK. And that gives you the average odds. Oh, hang on. I've got it wrong, haven't I? I need to put in the time. So it does need uh, another. Uh, let me get the time. I need to go for a lie down after this. Yeah, I'm putting these in the wrong one. So time. The good thing with Excel is any issues or errors are quite easy to spot. So um, you know you look out and you'll see that something doesn't feel quite right. So put those in there. So format that, turn it to a number. So two decimal places. And then we have the average odds for all horses in that race 10 minutes before the off. Now, I did say that would be the last one, but let's just use if. So this is how you use a simple if statement. If this is greater than uh, that, but BSP lower. If it's false, BSP higher. Doesn't mean anything, but that's just how you can use the if function as well. There. That's how you pull your averages using more than one set of criteria. We use trim, if error, left, v lookup, concatenate, count if, rank, and sum if. Okay, I hope that was useful. Um, I think that's where I'll leave it now. Um, but if there's more requests for specific formulas, then I will be sure to do another video.